Hello again, everybody. This is Nick with WatchTalkWorld.com, and what we have here today is the Seiko Orange Sumo, or the model number SBDC005, if memory serves me correctly. Here we have another diver's watch. It's about 44 millimeters in diameter. It's a uh, probably about 12, 13 millimeters tall but uh, something we'll talk about here in a little bit is the uh, the curves used all throughout this watch really make it deceivingly thinner on the wrist this is a Japan domestic market watch and unfortunately with Seiko they kinda keep all the goodies to themselves and what I mean by that is is for those in the United States, we generally receive the same kind of batch of their somewhat generic quartz, some of their kinetics, but the automatics and their high-end stuff uh, basically generally stays in Japan unless you know someone or there's a few sellers online like Haguchi or Seiya, and there's another one I found today, it starts with a C, but I can't remember it, but, you know, they can, uh, they'll ship it to you and prices are always fair on a Seiko so this one cost uh, $450 new as you can tell it's got the orange dial which came on the rubber strap um, I owned a black sumo briefly about a month ago and sold it the black didn't really do anything for me I wasn't really all that pleased with the bracelet so I ordered this one from from Haguchi and I've stuck it on my Hirsch carbon strap which admittedly this is too thin a strap to really match the watch with the watch this large I really need to put a thicker strap on it but that's uh, that'll be something to come up later so uh, I mentioned earlier 44 millimeters probably 12 or 13 tall but one thing uh, kind of the theme of this watch is you know, using lines and curves to not only give us a really flowing look, a really smooth look, but also it's got a functional purpose as well. Because when you wear this watch, this will hug the top of your wrist all the way around, making, while it makes a lot of contact to the wrist, it's so smooth here that it makes for a very comfortable and secure fit. It just kind of sits there. Your wrist is kind of like that. It just sits right on top of it, kind of hugs it. As you can see, without my fingerprints, we got polished. There's a little brushed strip here. Back up to polished. And the shoulders of the lugs here, we, we're brushed again. And then a very itty bitty little polished strip here, uh, which is pretty similar to my Seamaster and how they kind of alternate back and forth between brushed and polished. It makes for a very classy look. Uh, I still wish it were a little smaller, but you know, even for as large of a watch that it is, they've done some neat things to really make it appear smaller. The bezel is partly shrouded. They, they've given it the illusion of the of it getting a bit thinner with the way they shape the lugs. Let me see if I can get a better shot of it. I mean, it's a large watch. Uh, even on the strap, I still wish this was a 22 millimeter lug instead of the 20. I still think sometimes that the strap just looks a bit too thin. Uh, some have suggested that they used a thinner strap to help reduce the size of the watch. And to me, I think it just makes it look all the bigger to have a tiny strap on it, but that's just me. Alright, enough about the looks. Uh, I got through pretty standard diver case back on the Seiko. We have air divers 200 meters. We have the Tsunami. And one thing I do like, I do like the drilled drilled lugs. It makes changing straps easier and keeps it from scratching back here. So. Excuse me, I'm still sick, so uh, bear with me. We have a 120 click bezel, 
Seiko is renowned for its bezels, and this one's really no different. It's smooth, good action, lines up well, and all that kind of stuff. There's no play to it. It's good and smooth. So, excuse me. <coughs> I'm back. Here we have the crown at four o'clock. Signed here. Got the Seiko S on it. Uh, it's also the same kind of design used on the Spirits. The crown's a bit grainy. Uh, there's a bit of. I'm not sure. Maybe the threading wasn't done real fine, but it kind of feels rough unscrewing and screwing it. But when unscrewed, everything operates very smoothly. It just feels like the threading, either on the inside of the crown or on the crown tube, isn't as smooth as it could be. And I, I try to be careful to make sure I'm not cross threading it, but kind of spinning it back and slowly turning and not adding a lot of pressure. But it still feels the same. But overall, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people compare this favorably to watches that are more expensive. Uh, you know, I agree with them on some points, some points I don't. And so I just watched, we have the 6R15 in-house Seca movement, which is a, a what, an automatic that beats away at six, six, six beats a second. And so far it's been really accurate. It's got a great track record for accuracy. I believe I checked this one today and it was about five seconds fast, which for any watch is pretty good, much less one that costs under $500. Of course, uh, Seiko is also known for their their loom, and this one's no different either. It glows like a torch, just as bright as my my Omega or my Breitling. But uh, really, if you like the way it looks, if I know I'll be brought there, tend for Japanese watches or. If you're a Swiss watch fan and want to try something different, I don't. You won't be disappointed. Don't let the price fool you into thinking that it's lower quality than what it is. Because really, I can't find anything that would suggest the $400 price tag. The only thing, mineral crystal. Some people, I, I do prefer sapphire, and I have to the sapphire that, but I've not had any problems with hard legs before. So, but uh, overall, it's a great watch. Fit and finish is fantastic on the case. Uh, it's just really tough to capture how the case work on camera. But definitely check it out if you're a diver fan. The orange is awesome. I'd also like to try the blue, but I think I'll stick with the orange for a while. If you have any questions or anything, come by watchtalkworld.com and we'd love to have you. Thank you.